All right, so when you're almost done with your sewing project, it's super exciting, but I also call it the moment of truth. Why, you will ask? Well, because all you have to do is to hem it, and here things can really go wrong. <laughs> Believe me, I've been there, and usually the two questions that you guys ask is, how to hem and what type of hem to choose for a this or that sewing project and this or that fabric. So today, let me share with you how I hem the projects that you see in my videos. I have a couple of projects here in front of me so that way you and I can hem them together and I've also prepared some samples for us with contrasting thread so that way you can clearly see what am I doing and how am I doing. This is totally my take on how I hem the garments. I'll share with you five types of hems that I use Three of them you see a lot in my videos, and along the way I will also give you some tips and tricks that hopefully will make it an easier process because uh, I know it can be heartbreaking when the hem doesn't turn out. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Now, the first type of hem that I use quite a bit is folded hem. It comes in two varieties, single fold and double fold. Now, the single fold hem can come in handy. However, I don't use it as often. And usually it is just the bottom of the fabric folded over and the raw edge of the fabric that you will finish on the zigzag stitch with the overcast stitch or maybe on the serger is still exposed. And there's just a straight stitch that goes right along that edge. Let me show you how that looks. We're going to be doing single fold hem today on this skirt and you might recognize it from the invisible zipper tutorial. Now it is made from really nice, thick, stretch cotton. Therefore, single fold hem for these type of materials is really perfect. For the first step, we're going to serge the raw edges. Now, if you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch or an overcast stitch. For the next step, we're going to fold the hem and press it with your iron. How much to fold will depend on what your pattern says or if you're making your own pattern on your own preference. I usually like my single fold hems to be about one inch, sometimes two inches. Therefore here, I'm taking my measuring tape or a ruler and then I'm measuring and making sure that my hem is even all the way around and I'm folding it in one inch and then pressing really good with my iron. Before pressing your garment, check the fabric content and make sure that you can actually apply heat to it. Now when the hem is all pressed, let's go ahead and take it to the sewing machine. And here's the big question, how to hem with the right side up or with the wrong side up? Most often you will see the option with the wrong side up, so that way you can actually see where you're stitching and you're catching both the actual fabric of the main project and the folded hem. However, I do it both ways and it really depends on what kind of fabric am I using and what kind of project am I working with. So let's explore both options. First one, let's go ahead and take a look how to hem with the right side up. Now usually in this case you can't really see underneath and you can't really see where is the end of the fold, but you can feel it. So you can definitely determine where is the end of the folded edge. Now as a guideline for your hem, you will use the hem guide on the plate underneath your presser foot. But if the guide does not extend to the size that you need, just use a little sticky note or a tape or any other object that will help you with making sure that your seam allowance or your hem allowance stays even throughout the whole project. Now the next option is to do the wrong side up, which is the most common option. And here everything is pretty straightforward as long as your hem is really even. Here you will do a straight stitch right underneath your serged or zigzagged stitch on the hem. Now here you will notice two things. I actually don't have a sticky note or a tape or any other hem guide on the right side of the presser foot as I sew this hem because I actually did a really good job on making sure that this hem is even all the way around. Therefore, I know that when I stitch right underneath my serged edge, I will get a really nice straight line even all the way around. And number two, I'm also not using any pins. Please do use pins if it makes you more comfortable. However, in this case, I'm working with really nice sturdy cotton, so it does hold the shape really well. Therefore, I don't need to use pins as everything lays flat as it is and nothing moves because those are just the properties of cotton when you work with it. 
Now the double fold hem is really similar to this one, but instead of folding it just once, you actually fold it twice. So that way you don't see the edge of the fabric, but instead it's folded in really nicely. And I do use that type of hem quite a bit. And that is just as simple and straightforward as creating a single fold hem. The only difference is we're going to be folding it twice. And in this case, I don't serge or zigzag the raw edge because it won't be visible once we're done. Now you're gonna take your project or piece of fabric you're going to fold it in once, a quarter of an inch, half an inch, one inch, depending on what kind of hem you would like to have. Then you're going to press it, and then you're going to fold it in one more time. Now, when I work with lightweight fabrics and I want my hem to have some sort of substance and weight, this works really well when both folds are actually of the even amount of fabric. So the first one is one inch and the second one is one inch as an example. Now in the fabrics that are a little bit thicker and I don't want my hem to be bulky, my first fold can be let's say a quarter of an inch and then my second fold will be one inch to create a really nice and thick hem without the bulk of folding it each time by one inch for example. Once you have folded the edge of your project twice, you can use pin needles to keep it all in place or a hand sewing needle and a thread to baste it. Now here I'm working with 100% medium weight linen and it presses so well, therefore I'm not basting it or using any pin needles. Place your project underneath your presser foot with the edge of the hem facing to the right. Place the needle on the very edge of the top fold of the hem and you will sew with a straight stitch all the way around, just like you see me do on the screen. And once you're done, it will look like this. Now the biggest tip that I can give for you for achieving those really nice, really crisp hems is to use your iron as your helper if your fabric allows that and if it presses really nicely, to hand baste it as well and of course to use your either measuring tape or ruler or seam gauge in order to make sure that your hem is nice and even from one side to another side from front to back. Now another type of hem is the rolled hem and there's also two ways how to do that and by the way this is my secret weapon on how to finish armholes on sleeveless tops when I don't want to do bias tape and when I don't want to do facing. This is a really nice method if you are working with finer fabrics that are really nice and soft and press nicely as well. So back to the rolled hem. Two ways how to do it. You can either do that with a rolled hem foot or you can do that manually and I'll tell you this. I have not mastered the rolled hem foot. I can do it okay, but okay really doesn't do that well for me. So I just do it manually. Now, traditionally, the rolled hem done by the sewing machine manually will require three rows of straight stitching. However, there are times when I do only two rows of stitching and those times are when my fabric is rayon. It's really great and easy to work with and I just don't see the need of doing three rows of stitching and I get away with doing just two without a problem. So this is how I do this hem with just two lines of stitching. Now, although this hem is going to end up really, really tiny, in my case, in this tutorial, one eighth of an inch, and of course, you can make it even smaller, but it's really great if you have some extra fabric on your hem, especially if you're working with finer fabrics like silk chiffons and silk-like fabrics, and you will see why in just a few moments. Now first I'm going to grab my sample fabric over here and I'm going to mark a line half an inch away from the edge of the fabric and I'm working with a heat erasable pen over here so once I press everything the line will be gone. Next we're actually going to fold the fabric right at that line and we're going to pin it. Once that is done we're going to make our way to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch right on the edge of that crease, right on that edge. Once that is done, you're going to grab your scissors and you're going to cut away excess of the fabric. You're going to cut really close to the stitch line, but not past it, leaving a little bit of room after that. So that way it's not that difficult for you to work. 
because the next step is going to be for us to fold it one more time for one eighth of an inch. Once that is done, you can pin it in place. And now we're going to stitch on top of that stitch line that we see as we folded the fabric in one more time. And I'm using here red thread, so hopefully you will see the difference. And that is very easy. From the right side of the fabric, you will see one line of stitching. And on the wrong side of the fabric, you will see one thicker line of stitching because you will have one row of stitches on top of another row of stitches. Now, as I mentioned, traditionally there would be three different rows of stitches on a pinned hem. However, I truly think that this works really well. At least for me, I find it very useful and I do find it very efficient to do just two of these rows of stitches and the hem comes out really nice and neat. Now, the next type of hem is using the bias tape. Yes, exactly right. You would use bias tape on your hem. And there are two ways, there are also two ways how to do it. One way would be to actually make it an exposed bias tape running um, on the edge of your garment. And the other way would be to actually use it on the inside of your garment, folding it in. So I prefer this second method where you would have your bias tape on the inside of your garment and not being exposed. However, if you're looking to add some contrast and some visual detail, the first option would be great as well. And you've seen me use this method on my circle top in white linen. So there it really made a difference and really provided that super crisp finish. So let me show you how to do that. First, let's do the exposed bias tape, the one that you can see from the wrong side and from the right side of the fabric. Now, here I have my sample fabric, which is in black, and I also have a little piece of bias tape as well, which is in white. The white pin right over here marks the wrong side of the fabric. For the first step, you're going to take your bias tape, and here I have marked the fold in red, so that way hopefully you can see a little bit better and understand a little bit better as well. Now you're going to place your bias tape right side onto the wrong side of the fabric. You're going to match the edge of the bias tape with the edge of your fabric and you're going to pin into that crease that I've marked in red. You can also baste it as well if it makes it easier for you. Once you have pinned, we're going to stitch on that red line. I'm going to go ahead and make my way to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right into that crease that is marked with a red line. I'm using a red thread as well so that way you will see red on the black. So now if you flip this to the right side of the fabric you will see one line of red stitches. The following steps will be number one, we will trim the seam allowance just a tiny bit so that way it's a little bit easier for us to fold over the bias tape and of course here I'm using a tiny bias tape that I already had on hand. Usually if you're doing this on the hem this would be much thicker or wider bias tape for that effect of contrasting hem. Once you have trimmed your seam allowance, go ahead and fold over the bias tape to the right side of the fabric and pin it in place. Once that is done, we're going to put a straight stitch on the very edge of that white bias tape to secure it in place. Here I'm making my way to the sewing machine and that's exactly what I'm doing here. Once that is done, it's going to look like this. Now, to create the bias tape hem where you cannot see it from the right side, but you can only see it from the wrong side of the fabric, is very similar. Here we have our piece of fabric. The white pin marks the wrong side of the fabric. And we're actually going to flip it to the right side of the fabric. We're going to grab our bias tape and we're going to lay it on top of our right side of the fabric. And then we're going to do exactly the same first step as we did in the other example. We're going to align the edge of the bias tape with the edge of the fabric and we're going to pin into that little crease. And after that, we're going to stitch that. So let's get that done. 
Once that first stitch is done, the next step that we're going to do is we're actually going to lay this bias tape flat like so together with our fabric with the seam allowance facing the bias tape underneath. And then we're going to understitch this bias tape so that way it wouldn't peek from underneath the fabric on the right side. So right now on the very edge of this white bias tape we're going to put a straight stitch. Once that is done, the last step for us to do is to actually fold this bias tape to the wrong side of the fabric and put a straight stitch on the very edge of the bias tape right over here. Once that is done, on the right side of the fabric, you will see just one row of stitches. And on the other side of the fabric, on the wrong side, you will see white bias tape with two rows of stitches. This is also great to use to finish necklines and armholes. Another type of hem that I like quite a bit, and I actually do that most often in my knit garments when I really want that super invisible finish, and that is invisible hem. And you can also do it two ways. You can do it on your sewing machine and you can do it by hand. On a sewing machine, it is almost invisible almost invisible. By hand, it is quite invisible. You can barely tell if done right that you have a hem over there. So let me show you both of those ways on your sewing machine and done by hand. Now, although it goes a lot faster on a sewing machine, my preferred method for the blind hem is to actually do it by hand. Here's my sewing needle, here's my thread. You can use double thread or single thread, whichever. I tend to use double thread on thicker materials and single thread on lighter materials. But right now I'm using double thread so that way you can see a little bit better. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your needle through the fabric and then you're going to catch one or two strings of the fabric of the top layer. You're going to catch those, you're going to put your needle through them and then you're going to put your needle into the hem allowance and then you're going to catch one or two more strings of the top layer of the fabric put your needle through them and then again back into the hem allowance. And that's how you're going to complete the entire hem of your garment. Now from the wrong side, you will see longer stitches and from the right side, you can hardly see any stitches at all. Obviously you will do that with the matching fabric and with a matching thread, not with a contrasting thread and fabric like I did over here, but you get the idea. And once you have everything secured, this hem is pretty nice and sturdy. So you don't have to worry about it coming undone or anything else like that. So this is definitely a winner. Now to do the blind hem on a sewing machine, you will need a blind hem foot and usually it comes with your sewing machine and it looks something like this. It might be all metal, it might be half plastic, half metal like mine. And then we're also going to use a blind hem stitch that you can see right over here. There is one for woven fabrics, there is one for stretch fabrics and of course you can always look it up online as well to see a better picture. This is my little swatch fabric right over here and as you can see I have actually searched the edge. You can use zigzag or overcast stitch on it as well. And then it will fold like this, like a regular single fold hem that we spoke of a little bit earlier in the video. The next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to fold our main project fabric. Imagine if this is a pant leg or any other part of the garment. We're actually going to fold it back so that way we can see the surged edge pretty clearly like this. Then we're going to take a couple of pins and we're going to put it in place like this. So that way it's a little bit easier for us to stitch. And now let's make our way to the sewing machine. 
Now when you're placing your actual garment underneath your blind hem foot, it's really important to find that right position, that perfect position, where the main bulk of the stitches is done on that actual hem allowance, that little serged edge that I was peeking through. And on the actual garment, you can only see tiny little cap of that zigzag stitch. So that way on the wrong side, it looks like this. And when you actually flip it open on the right side, you only see a tiny itty bit of that thread that's peeking through. And obviously you'll be using thread that matches and you will also play around with the width and the length of the stitches. Also, oddly enough, I do find it that sometimes it's a little bit easier and a little bit more precise to do a blind hem with just a regular standard sewing machine presser foot. So definitely play around with it. Just because there's a special foot for it doesn't mean that you cannot do the same thing with a regular foot. However, blind hem foot definitely helps. Now this last type of hem, I use here and there, but not a lot at all, but I figured you might want to know about it. And that is hem with facing, meaning that much the same as you would create a facing for your neckline, you would create a facing for your hem. It will mimic the shape of the hem. It's really useful if you're doing some sort of scalloped edge, for example, or some sort of other interesting technique. That's where that hem with facing comes in really handy. Or maybe the hem is really nice and curved and you want to add some weight to it as well. Let me show you very simply what is the principle of this technique. So here is my curved hem and as you can see the principle is exactly the same as you would do for a facing on the neckline. That is my main project and this is my facing for the hem and it mimics the shape exactly which is going to give us a really nice and clean result. Now let's go ahead and place them right sides together. So imagine that you have your project and your facing you're going to put them right sides together and then you're going to stitch on the very edge. Now for the best result, I would suggest to use 3 8 of an inch or a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Here I'm going to be using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and we're going to stitch a straight stitch from one side to another. Now once that is done, I will actually go ahead and trim my seam allowance to be one quarter of an inch wide. And the reason for it is because then you don't have to notch your seam allowance. It actually folds in really nice and neat and you don't have to worry about anything else. And there's no extra bulk by a wider seam allowance because your seam allowance is just quarter of an inch. And after that, just like we did with the bias tape hem example, we're going to fold the seam allowance to one side towards the actual facing and we're going to understitch very closely to the edge. Once that is done, you'll be able to fold the facing all the way to the wrong side without any problems, press with your iron and you'll have a really nice and clean finish. Of course, when you do that on the actual garment, don't forget that you also have to finish the edge of the facing with a zigzag stitch or overcast stitch or serger. Now, are these all of the ways how to hem your garments? Probably not. There are some other ways how to go about hemming your garments, but these are the ones that I personally use the most and that you will see most often in my sewing videos and tutorials. So that will definitely get you started. Thank you so much for watching. If you want some more sewing tips and tricks, click right over here and I think you will definitely enjoy that video and I'll see you right there. Thank you. Bye.